it will be felt. So you wash it like wool. That's Wally trying to get my husband to play ball with him. And he just got in trouble and the ball got put up because I'm trying to do this. Okay, that's spinning the dog hair. And so you can see how much is already on here. And I still have probably half this bag left. And when this came, the whole the bag was packed. Then I carded it and fluffed it up. So this is not just the flyaway. Smashed in there. I probably have half this or this much left out in the garage. So I'll probably get a full bobbin. And that should be plenty to make a scarf or a hat or combine with the other two um, colors of the dog hair out there to use. If you want to see how it's going to look, you can pull off a little bit, weight it down, let it ply back on itself, and there's what the finished yarn will look like. Again, I'm, when I ply it, I'm also going to ply it uh, very softly to match the twist. The reason you use a little weight on the bottom is to pull it down um, so that it can twist back on itself. Otherwise, you're liable to just get a kink. When I run out of fiber, I can reach down in my bag and get another handful. Because I carded this, it's very open, so it's spinning very easily. Even though it, it doesn't look like it's in a nice, perfect bat, which it isn't, or roving. But it's still carded and open. The fibers are very easy to draft, as you can see. I could probably spin a lace weight yarn with this fiber with no trouble at all. This would all, could also be spun on a charka or a great wheel or a takli. Spinning, spinning it on a drop spindle would be uh, difficult because the fiber is so short and most of the spindles are heavy. You would probably want to do it on a support spindle or mix it with a little bit of wool just to give it a little more length um, that you could work with. It's time to ball the yarn. I'm going to move up close and hope I get the skin, the bobbin, and the ball winder in the video. You already saw my yarn pull apart once, twice. I'm going to tie a little knot in the end to stick in the ball winder. And because this is softly spun, I expect it to pull apart several times while I'm winding it off. That's okay. I'll just splice it together when I ply. I'm going to loosen the tension so it will feed off evenly. Hook it through, put it on the ball winder. And I want to keep a little bit of tension on it as I wind or the ball will just kind of collapse and be yucky and the bobbin will fly all over if I don't put some tension on it. You could also do it up through the hooks and around. It doesn't really matter. You just want very little tension on the bobbin, but you do have to have some. I don't like to take the string off because that just makes it too loose. 
I'll be back when I finished balling because then I'll be ready to apply. I'm almost through balling and I've had a break. I'm going to tie it together with a big, obvious, loose overhand knot. And hopefully I can show you when I ply, what I'll do is stop, tear this out, and then put the ends together so there will be no big blob. I've got my ball and I'm ready to ply. I need to tighten up my tension again and I want it just a little bit tighter than when I was spinning. When I ply, I ply S so the wheel is turning to my left and I put my leader on the left hand hook. It doesn't really matter. You could put it on the right hand hook. I just happen to do it this way. I like to do it this way, but that is not the only way to do it. Pull the leader through orifice. From my ball, I take a center and the outside. Plying from the ball is a little bit more difficult, so if you're brand new, you might want to ply from two bobbins. If you don't have the bobbins, this is one way to do it. I tie a loop in my leader rather than trying to spin it on. I put the two strands I'm plying through and I start the wheel. When you're plying, you're actually untwisting the yarn a little bit. And I'm untwisting a yarn that isn't very twisted to start with. So breaks are to be expected. But by keeping this very softly spun, I'm going to have a fuzzier, fluffier yarn. Now I need this to draw in. When you're plying, you want a measured feed. Each time I treadle two times and you want to keep tension. If you don't keep tension with your right hand, or you could do it with your right hand in front and the left hand back. But if you don't keep tension on the yarn, the two strands, as you feed them forward, your one yarn will wrap around the other and you'll have a designer wrap yarn and not a nicely evenly plied yarn. Now I've done a couple yards, so I'm going to pull it off and look at it. I want it softly plied, and that seems to fit the bill. It's not going back on itself, so it's probably very balanced. Now all I have to do is sit back, relax, and ply all of this. As the bobbin fills, I'll move the yarn down one hook and start again. It's important that you move the yarn down. If you don't, it will build up and as it builds up it will get very high and then will kind of collapse and it can totally, if you let it go too long, it can collapse and totally tangle and it doesn't happen too often but I managed to do it a couple months ago when I was spinning a diamond alpaca fleece and never could find the middle and had to cut off probably a third of a bobbin full of beautiful black alpaca.